Hello, welcome to HITZ Sport. All right, summer signing food for strays are literally the worst things on planet Earth. Yeah, even worse than the pimples on Susan Boyle's feet. There is nothing worse than getting overexcited for a transfer in July, only for them to let you down by Halloween. Honestly, you've rushed out to go and get their name on the back of your shirt, have his face tattooed on your arm, and then he stinks up the place like a baked potato. So I'm gonna find every Premier League club and find the one player, not the worst player, but the most frustrating transfer you signed this summer. Right, let's go. Arsenal Martin Odegaard. Isn't Martin Odegaard supposed to be the best player on the planet by now? I mean, most teenagers spend their youth drinking Copperberg out of a bush. Uh, this guy spent his teenage years doing tours of giant European clubs. The media's been obsessed with him since he was 15 years of age. The guy's the goddamn Norwegian Justin Bieber. And yet, so far this season, at 22 years old, the guy's been an underwhelming Chris Sandwich. A 30 million pound summer buy from Real Madrid. Yeah, I know he scored a free kick winner away at Burnley. And yeah, he did play well in the North London Derby win, but did anyone see him trudge about like a melting snowman against Brighton away? The guy's already linked to the return to Real Sociedad. This guy is supposed to be the next Mezzadozo, right? Uh, to me, he's just a former child star. He's the modern day Macaulay Culkin. The guy was supposed to be the Norwegian Ronaldinho, and yet he's been outshined by Emil Smith Rowe. A guy who, when he was 14, was probably sat at home on Friday nights practicing kissing techniques on his cat. Aston Villa Leon Bailey. If I was an Aston Villa fan, I'd be close to tearing chunks of acne off my nose. Leon Bailey is an incredibly exciting signing. A 24 year old Jamaican winger who banged in 15 goals and recorded 11 assists at Bayer Leverkusen. Those were Kai Havertz type stats in that club. I mean, only last year he was linked to Man City. Three years ago, European journalists were trying to stuff him into the Gareth Southgate's England World Cup squad. On paper, the man is Villa's most mouth-watering. Exciting transfers is Ashley Young. The, the, the first time they bought him, that is. Not now, we probably need to nurse to wipe his bum. And yeah, Bailey's only had 85 minutes in an Aston Villa shirt. And it gets worse in those rare moments. He's looked brilliant. An excellent assist in his debut at Vicar Road. And then a blistering breakaway goal in a 3-0 win over Everton at Villa Park. And where he also practically scored from a corner kick. This isn't just some fat Charles and Zogbia who looks like his boots are constantly filled with pizza. No, because then the Villa fans can make their peace. With him being more injury prone than a pensioner after a stroke. This is a 30 million pound superstar who's been left out of seven matchday squads and yet to start a single game. The man is a secret weapon who needs to be unleashed. So the fact his limbs are weaker than cheese puffs. Oh, if I was a Villa fan, I'd be close to ripping on my own Adam's apple. This, this is unfair. It's like a fat diabetic not being allowed to touch his Bailey's ice cream in the fridge. Yeah, he must be boring on torture. Brentford, nobody. I'm sorry, but no. Brentford haven't had a frustrating summer signing. They, um, they've all been brilliant. Next, Brighton and Agmwepu. Yeah, and Agmwepu is starting to look like Brighton's annual 20 million pound flop. The, the 23 year old Zambian fielder arrived from Red Bull Salzburg, but uh, he hasn't started since the opening day of the season when he was dragged off at halftime against Burnley. And he, he's yet to start a game since, just two substitute appearances. There have been injuries, warming the bench, just all a bit forgettable. Burnley and Maxwell Cornet. I maintain Maxwell Cornet is such a non Burnley type of player. The guy is a lively left winger with bags of skill in his feet. Phrase up, he's got more techniques in his hip than some of his teammates have on their entire body. Some Burnley fans have been so brainwashed over the years to try and enjoy the likes of Josh Brownhill and Phil Bardsley kicking sweat off the opposition. Then the class of Cornet from Leon is a breath of fresh air. He's the first foreign born player that Burnley have bought from abroad since stiffened to four half a decade ago. It's just a shame he's also about as sturdy as a toilet made of wood. He played 33 minutes in the one that lost to Arsenal in his second match. He sticks Burnley 2-1 up at Leicester with an acrobatic volley on 40 minutes and then goes off injured two minutes later with a pulled hamstring. Again, he misses the trip to Norwich, plays less than an hour against Man City. I mean, clearly, like the departed Robbie Brady, he's also got the durability of a plastic Barbie doll. Chelsea, Romelu Lukaku. I hope, I really hope Romelu Lukaku doesn't succumb to the Chelsea striker curse. I want him to succeed, I really do. But I remember the gold droughts at Old Trafford, and I remember fans likening him to a walking post box. There is this football myth out there that Lukaku is the Belgian Snorlax. That really, he's just a flat track bully with the first touch of a baked potato. Listen, he, he had a great start, but here's the reality. He's only scored against three goalies this season, all of whom are currently now second choice in warming the bench. Bert Leno, Jet Steer, and some Russian meatball panini called Stanislav Kruchkik. They've all got the reflexes of a burnt waffle. Lukaku is a top class center four, but I'm sorry. He's just gone 472 minutes without a goal. That's, that's nearly eight hours of football. This fella costs 100 million pounds, and yet he's currently 11th in the goal Golden Boot race, level with Andros Townsend. I mean, come on, Chelsea fans, are you not frustrated? Crystal Palace, Odson Edward. Okay, this isn't as frustrating as it could be, but still. Odson Edward is a £20 million centre forward signing from Celtic. His debut was six minutes against Spurs. 
and he scored twice. I'm sorry, but the hype would have gone through the roof, right? Everyone stuff him in your fancy league team this instant. Nah, because he followed it up with an anonymous 25 minutes of downfield, where he barely touched the ball, didn't even sneeze in the direction of a goal during the 72 minutes he played at Brighton, before again drawing a blanket home to Leicester. I realise he just scored at the Emirates Stadium, so yes, he could be a great signing, but so far, after his incredible debut, Maybe this month has been a tiny bit frustrating. Everton Solomon Rondon. Okay, well to be fair, none of Everton's bargain basement signings have been frustrating. I mean, they've all been pretty good. I suppose, let's say Solomon Rondon, who just followed Rafa Benitez from China. I mean, clearly Rafa goes to bed every night sniffing a lock of this guy's hair. The obsession is just borderline creepy. Listen, this season, the plan wasn't for Dominic Calvert-Lewin to have limbs made of pita bread, so Ronda wasn't supposed to play this much. I mean, it was just supposed to be 10 minute cameos. Not starting five games in a row. Sure, he's held up the ball okay at times, but not even look like scoring a goal. Not even during 90 minutes against Norwich. And they've got a defense made of cardboards. This guy is a Venezuelan Andy Carroll. Sure, stuff him in a relegation scrap, fine. But for a billionaire bankroll club targeting Europe, again, no, it's like cutting your lawn with a pair of scissors. Leeds Daniel James. Daniel James cost Leeds United 25 million pounds. Don't ever forget that. What's he actually done? Let's see. Leeds fans watched him utterly rip through their defence in August playing 75 minutes for Man United as he helped Man United stick five past Ilan Meslier. And then he moves to Leeds and suddenly is the end product of Panda Sick. I mean, he's been hideous. Just a lot of running and that is. The man's clearly even forgotten how to cross the damn ball. Leicester Patson Daka. I'm gonna go with Pat and Daka. Do you remember the hype this Zambian striker had in the summer? A 20 million pound move. A guy apparently leads with Liverpool, Arsenal, and Man United. This was Erling Haaland's former strike partner at Red Bull Salzburg, who just stuffed in 34 goals last season, right? And now he's just been relegated to given minutes in the Europa League. He's left a rot on the bench six times this season. I know he just scrambled a late goal against Man United, but even then he was only on the pitch for 13 minutes. The man is supposed to be a goal machine, so why has he spent this season stuffed on the bench alongside the likes of Danny Ward and than Dewsbury Hall. Liverpool, Ibrahim Kanate. Okay, this probably isn't too frustrating for Liverpool fans, but for Ibrahim Kanate, this guy was supposed to be the 34 million pound answer to Liverpool's defensive crisis, right? Well, he's currently watching his former RB Leipzig center up partner, Dio Upakamano, play every week at Bayern Munich while he, oh, he spends every week playing with his phone on the bench. I mean, he was given his debut in that three nil home win over Crystal Palace, but other than that, nine times he's failed to get off the bench. This guy had plans to break into the France team for next Christmas's World Cup, right? Not more into French Ben Davies, cheerleading from the bench, and now that Joe Gomez is back too, this fella's probably currently fourth choice Liverpool centre back. Christ above. Man City Jack Grealish. So Pep Guardiola has finally decided to drop Jack Grealish. Yeah, he had a brilliant showing in the 6 3 Champions League win over RB Leipzig short. But other than that, and the ball deflecting off his knob against Norwich, he's just looked starstruck by his own teammates. Price what even said as recently as last year that he still watches Kevin De Bruyne on YouTube. So now when he passes him the ball, Grealish probably gets 20 pounds. It's frustrating for City fans. You saw how many people came to watch his unveiling, as if he was the brummy David Beckham. I mean, when Riyad Mahrez signed for the club, the poor fellow was barely asked for a selfie on the tram. Grealish has mostly looked poor against likes of Tottenham, Leicester, Southampton, Chelsea and PSG, and seeing him play the role of Cinder Ford and Anfield is just painful to watch. For City fans, admit it. Just admit it. You're underwhelmed. Man United, Jadon Sancho. Yeah, I should probably take the blame for this. I mean, it, I, I did an entire video bigging Jadon Sancho up. I'm pretty sure I cursed him. But then again, Let's look at a tweet from 2019. 2012, Shinji Kagawa leaves Borussia Dortmund for Manchester United. It's terrible. 2016, Henrik Mkhitary leaves Borussia Dortmund for Manchester United. It's also terrible. 2020, don't do it, Jadon Sancho. Well, look who's insane now. Okay, I don't want to write Jadon Sancho off immediately because he is a very good player, but so far he has been awful. It, it's been an awful start. How frustrating must this be for you? Sancho is a generational talent, an incredible footballer in the Bundesliga who Man United have chased for years. 18 months ago, some fans were saying that a 100 million pound transfer fee would have been a bargain. Rio Ferdinand said he's going to be the best English footballer on the planet. Well, really? Because so far this season, Phil Foden's maturity and class is beginning to make his former City teammates look like a one-legged Sammy Amiobi. For Man United fans, it was frustrating to watch their new superstar signing Rot and Gareth Southgate bench during the summer. But now, he's only completed 90 minutes in a Man United shirt once, losing 1-0 at home to West Ham in the Maltesers Cup, where he didn't do much. He started three times in the league, once in the Champions League, and was given nearly 40 minutes in that shocking embarrassment loss at Young Boys. Zero goals and zero assists after 10 games. Man United fans, honestly, watching a supposed world-class talent like Sancho show the composure of a sleepy Danny Welbeck, oh, you must be distraught. Newcastle, Joe Willock. Joe Willock hasn't won a game of football since May. Lads, 
We're probably 50 days till Christmas. He ended last season with a seven game goal scoring streak, forcing Newcastle to play Arsenal 20 million pounds for him. But lads, the, the Geordies, they loved Willock. Some of them were demanding he be stuffed in the England squad. They were begging him to return. Well, so far this season, he's at, barely had a shot on goal, he's, he's just gone eight games without a goal, has mostly looked like another Jeff Hendrick, zero presence in midfield, no creativity or spark. It's frustrating for the Geordies because they've seen it with their own eyes. They know there are goals in this boy. I mean, it's been like when they used to see Papi Sisi look world class for two months, forcing his confidence flushed down a toilet bowl, and going the rest of the season looking like a dehydrated pigeon. Nor Josh Sargent. <sighs> no, Josh Sargent was supposed to be the one to take the pressure off Timo Pukki, score a few goals. Did anyone see this American striker's performance against Brighton at the weekend? Here he is, one of them with gold. Put your foot through it. But no, he taps it with his toe. Honestly, Norwich, you must be pulling your hair out. Southampton, Adam Armstrong. It's hard to tell which championship goal machine is going to rot like a chunk of bonfire wood in the Premier League. Adam Armstrong, this is a guy who scored nearly 30 goals last season with his eyes closed for Blackburn. He was a 20 million pound buy supposed to replace Danny Ings. I mean, it's all about confidence. He scored in his debut against Everton. If he just scored either of his two guilt edge chances against Man United on his home debut, if he'd help them beat the club who beat them 9-0 last season. Automatically, he'd be a St. Mary's hero and would now probably be scoring a free week. But instead, it's over 60 days since his last goal and he's now watching Albanian children take his place. Ton and Brian Gill. Maybe I'm wrong, but to me, Brian Gill is a frustrating talent. This is Jesus Navas part two. He's played nine games for Spurs. One of them was losing to Paco Stuff Ferreira in the Europa Conference League. He played an hour in a 5-1 win over a team from Slovenia and still couldn't register a goal or an assist. What for Josh King? Never mind Whopper fans, Josh King must be frustrated with himself. If he ends the season with zero goals, then he would have scored zero league goals in two full seasons across three different clubs. That is beyond hideous. Only 30 years ago, he was scoring 12 goals in a Premier League season for Bournemouth. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was desperately trying to bring him to Man United. There is ability in this Norwegian striker's boots. It's not as if he's some past the fella winding down his career. He's only 29 years old, played in seven Premier League games a season, and registered a big fat nothing. I don't care if the early Haaland has stolen your thunder as Norway's golden God. I don't care if these probably replaced your face on billboards in the streets of Oslo and Bern. You are a man with nearly 50 Premier League goals in your CV. Where is your pride? West Ham Nikola Vlasic. Yeah, so West Ham have just replaced Philip Anderson with another 30 million pound attacking playmaker flop. Nikola Vlasic, the former Everton failure. This guy was supposed to be the replacement for Jesse Lingard this season. He's the fourth most expensive player in the club's history and can't even make the first team. Jory's given game time in the Europa League against teams from Croatia and Austria and he started in the two under feeding its Man United, but other than that, nothing. You're watching Philippe Anderson part two. Wolves, Francisco Trincao. Okay, Francisco Trincao is a highly rated Barcelona wonder kid, right? A 21 year old with a bio clause of over half a billion euros. So Wolves, don't even think about trying to make this transfer permanent. But this guy is supposed to be the next Ronaldo. No, Wolves already had that last season when they were pulling their nostril hairs out over the side of Fabio Silva every week. Well, Trincao's just taking his place on the team and also is the end product of a rubber duck. He's played 503 minutes for Wolves. He starts nearly every week and yet it's just one limp goal to show for against Nottingham Forest in the Tiddlywings Cup. I mean, come on Wolves, surely you're frustrated. And with that, it was, let me know in the comments below what do you think, right? Who is being the most frustrating transfer this summer? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.